Wet n Wild Orlando was the flagship water park of the Wet n Wild brand, which featured multiple water parks throughout the US, Brazil, and Mexico. The longest running water park in the USA closed in 2016. My name is Sam, and welcome back to Expedition Extinct. George Millay envisioned creating an underwater zoo and opened SeaWorld San Diego in 1964, followed after by SeaWorld Ohio in 1970 and then SeaWorld Orlando in 1973. While developing SeaWorld, he realized the need for a water park in Orlando. He said being in Florida with all its heat and hot sun, you naturally think about cooling off in water. In the mid 1970s, he directed his time and money towards this idea. The idea originated from the splash pad in Canada and the wave pool at Point Mallard Park in Alabama. His desire was to combine these two ideas and build upon them in order to make a successful park. And due to his recent success at SeaWorld, he was easily able to form a team of investors for this product. While roller coasters have existed for over a century, the water park was a brand new idea and Wet n Wild Orlando was the world's first large scale mainstream water park. While River Country was open nearby in 1976, it didn't offer the scale and thrills that Wet n Wild could. Wet n Wild opened on March 13th, 1977 and offered a year-round attraction with its heated pools. Its first year, it opened to heavy rain. It stayed open though and started making money in its second year and kept going strong from there. In 1998, Malay sold off his interest in these parks and the Orlando location was purchased by Universal Studios Recreation Group who continued to lease the land it was located on. In mid-2013, Universal purchased the 50 acres of land for $30 million. Throughout its lifetime, the park saw many changes with its slides and attractions. They included Banzai Boggan, which was a toboggan-style slide where riders carried plastic toboggans to the top of the 32-foot tower. This original ride was replaced by Hydromaniac, in 1986, which had two enclosed body slides at the top of the same tower, and again replaced by the Surge in 1994, a pro slide mammoth slide. There's something big going on in Orlando, a towering tribute to man's relentless quest for the ultimate family thrill ride. can resist the urge to surge. The all-new surge, only at Wet n Wild on International Drive. 2005 added a second slide to the tower in Disco H2O, an enclosed Bayamoff bowl, again from ProSlide, that is themed to the 1970s disco era. Opening in 1986 and created by Whitewater Slides, three slides called Mac 5 Alpha, which was a mat slide and basically the only one on this complex of slides that was mostly unchanged since opening in 1986, aside from the Alpha part of its name being dropped. Mac 5 Beta, which used single person rafts, later it became the Flyer. In 1996, it was retrofitted by ProSlide so that a four person toboggan style raft could go down the course, and single riders were no longer allowed. It was renamed to the Fuji Flyer. The final slide in this complex was the Raging Rapids, which was a single person raft ride with a series of swirling pools and waterfalls to make it feel like you were traveling down a raging river hence the name. Raging Rapids was renovated in 2003 to become The Blast, which was made to make it like you were going through a factory that was having its water lines repaired, which you can say at least is an interesting concept for a water slide. The Black Hole, which replaced another tube slide called the Corkscrew, which was also an opening day slide from Whitewater Slides. The original slide was an open slide with a corkscrew design and ended up by going through a tunnel. It didn't last too long though and was closed in 1989. The tower was demolished and the fully enclosed black hole replaced it. 
fact, the park's wave pool was large for the time and offers a large selection of seating nearby. The Surf Lagoon wave pool was one of the few only opening day attractions left in the park from when it opened in 1977 to when it closed in 2016. It was one of the first wave pools in North America, and the only one before this was the one at Point Mallard Park in Alabama, where George Millay got his inspiration for his park. The back of the park featured a large lake, which housed the wake zone, where you could go wake skating or many other kinds of water activities. The park's lazy river used to be larger and feature a large pool and multiple waterfalls, but the pool area was eventually filled in to be a special events area. Kamikaze, which was a single rider body slide, opened with the park in 1977 and was made of gunite, which was formed by hand. The ride stayed until 1991 when it was replaced by the Bubba Tub. The Bubba Tub was a family raft slide, again by ProSlide, that pretty much followed the free drops of Kamikaze but in one big slide that used rafts. Again though, this ride was replaced in 2014 by a mat racer called Aqua Drag Racer by, surprise, Pro Slides. A Pro Slide slide replacing a Pro Slide slide. The final slide complex has seen a lot of changes throughout its lifetime also. It started out with just one ride called Der Stucker, which is German for dive bomber, the tallest ride in Wet n Wild and has been located here since it opened in the 1980s. This six story tall ride drops riders at nearly vertical angle down a 250 foot slide. The tower originally had three identical slides running down it and was hugely popular when it opened. Eventually, they took away the middle slide and added an enclosed twin intertwining body slide called Blue Niagara. And let me tell you, this ride could be rough. It was again removed in 2007 and replaced by Brainwash, an enclosed tornado family ride which opened in 2008. Brainwash though not only replaced Blue Niagara, but also one of my favorite ever water rides, Hydra Fighters. Hydra Fighters was so fun. You sat back to back with another rider in suspended gondolas and each rider had a water nozzle to control a high power hose in front of you. Working in turn, turning your nozzle on and off, you controlled the swinging due to the force of the hose and you really could get pretty high up on this thing. It had a low throughput though and the lines got quite long, but it was fun. It sat where the bowl section of Brainwash eventually sat. The last slide in this complex was one of, if not the first slides of its kind, which you now see in multiple parks around the Orlando area. One of the Der Stuka slides added a capsule on top with a drop floor, which dropped you down onto the slide. 2001 also added the Storm, another pro slide ride, which was a twin bowl ride. In fact, a lot of these rides eventually came from Pro Slide, a Canadian manufacturer of water rides. Pro Slides would go on to create multiple rides throughout the area and featured slides at SeaWorld's Aquatica Park, which opened in 2008, select rides in Disney's Blizzard Beach, and the main slide designer behind Volcano Bay slides. So let's talk about Volcano Bay for a second. Essentially, one of the main reasons that caused the end of this almost 40 year old park. In 1999, Wet n Wild was the most attended park in the United States, which is when Disney's water parks attendance finally surpassed it. Wet n Wild though was still pretty popular, with 2014's attendance at nearly 1.3 million, compared to around 2 million for each of the Disney water parks and around 1.6 million for the newer Aquatica Park. It was especially popular with locals and could be considered a cheaper day out than visiting in some of the other parks in the area. In early 2015, Universal officially announced it would be building Volcano Bay, a whole new generation of water park that would forever change the perception of water theme parks. Speculation about the closure of Wet n Wild began it, and in June 2015, Universal officially announced the park would be closing forever on December 31st, 2016, and that the groundbreaking spirit that defined the park would continue at Volcano Volcano Bay. Yes, Wet n Wild did feel slightly outdated compared to the other parks in the area, but it was still a lot of fun. 
Did Volcano Bay eventually deliver on that promise? Hmm, I'm not so sure about that myself. And while it is a great park, it doesn't offer too much different than Disney's water parks, and they have been doing it since the late 1980s. And what inspired these Disney parks? Well, Wet n Wild. Disney had River Country, which they thought was fantastic because it had free slides and a swimming pool. Then along came George Millay, and they started to think, wait a minute, he really did take this a lot further. A few years later, Disney opened Typhoon Lagoon and River Country. Well, we know what happened to that. After closing at the end of 2016, the Wet n Wild Park was quickly demolished. This prime spot of land, another reason for the park's closure, was to become two large universal hotels with around 4,000 hotel rooms, which is huge. For comparison, Cabana Bay has around 2,200 rooms. George Millay was given a Lifetime Achievement Award and named the official father of the water park. Sadly, he passed away in 2006, but without doubt the influence he had not only on the Orlando area, but around the world still lives on today. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and we will see you next time on Expedition Extinct. <laughs>